Is there enough room and anglers for another tournament trail? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. So before I get started, if you can do me a favor, click the subscribe button, please. Give me that Christmas gift. Click subscribe. I really do appreciate it. If you didn't hear, there's a new tournament trail or possible tournament trail. It is called the Tournament Anglers Association. They are the TAA. The TAA is a non-profit Christian-based professional fishing tournament designed for dramatically reducing tournament costs and significantly increased winnings for anglers. They are new. They just came out with a video and are asking to see how many people are interested in putting $5,000 down to possibly win $300 thousand dollars at first glance it seems like a very old school format they are looking for 200 anglers to plop down five thousand dollars and they are going to try to pay out a hundred percent to the anglers they're going to have some expenses they need to have a tournament director they need to have a waymaster they need to have a cpa they need to pay for insurance and they also need to pay for a media person now they're not going to have the back end support that I believe is needed to have a consistent trail. But at first glance, it looks like a really good option for some tournament anglers to make a lot of money. They're gonna be going against a lot of people that are weekend warriors, that are maybe great at that certain place, at that certain pond or lake. But this is an opportunity for the average Joe to go against the, the some of their heroes possible heroes and fish against some great competitors for some insane money now i'll be honest i have a lot of questions about this to start off the man who is putting this on his his name is alan brooks he's an entrepreneur he is a loves fishing but he wants to fish against the best he wants to create a fun fishing tournament league to start off they're trying to create one tournament but Maybe down the line, they might have more tournaments. They're trying to look for 200 anglers. And right now, as of making this video, they have 70 or 75 people who are interested in joining the TAA. As Alan said, they're in phase one of a possible five or six phases to get to where they want to be. Phase one is just gathering interest before December 15th uh, with a hopeful, if they can get 200 people, they'll have their first tournament, almost a complete turnaround in January, which is pretty pretty aggressive they're not looking for sponsors but if they do get sponsors they're going to put that money into the tournament winnings for the anglers they're trying to do 100 percent payback but they do have like i said some things that they're going to have to pay and it wouldn't surprise me if 50 60 80 thousand dollars of the tournament entry fees goes towards paying a waymaster and a media person and a cpa and insurance and a a, a tournament director that seems kind of legitimate but not having the people behind the scenes that make and run a tournament is where I'm a little sketchy on. There's a two sketchy things I'm, I'm unsure about. Alan didn't want his name out there to start off with. And if someone is looking at trying to gather interest into a professional tournament trail or a professional tournament, and you wanna be upfront with everything that you're gonna do, you should be upfront right away on who you are and why you're putting this out. He wanted to put it out and kind of leave people in the dark a little bit. And I think that that isn't the right thing to do. Kind of leaves me on, it leaves me and it leaves other anglers on that verge of, is this really real or is this scammy? And I'm not saying that Alan has anything to do with any scam at all, but it just is a little sketchy to start off with. Luckily, anglers aren't paying up front. They're trying to see and gather the interest to start off with. But I would say to Alan, Alan, if you're gonna do these kind of things, just be upfront with the people because our this industry is very loyal and you know there's just too many people out there these days that are trying to get something for nothing. And that's that's where I would I would just say that to his face. Like I mentioned, they're going to try to pay out $300,000 and actually they're going to pay out a lot of spots. They're going to pay a bunch of anglers up to like 48th or 49th or someone in that, in that range. And the, they're going to pay 28 people, 13,000. That's going to be the, the end payout. But if they get sponsors and other things, maybe that'll help pay out more anglers. I'm not sure if they'll get sponsors. There isn't someone that's going to go out there and be filming live and putting it on the internet. One of the things that they're gonna to try to do is they're gonna ask all the anglers to 
have and record everything that goes on during their tournament day. This is another thing that I think could lead to some some people that work that gray line. I don't know if Alan has done any video stuff for like I have, but a lot of times SD cards burn out in GoPros. It's happened to me 20 or 30 times. And when you come back to the boat ramp and somebody has five giants and wins, people are gonna question, how did he catch him? What did he do this stuff? And when your SD card dies, or you don't know that it isn't recording, or your battery dies or whatever, then people are gonna start to question the authenticity of that tournament. And that's where I think you need the people behind the scenes trying to help out what's going on in front of the, in front of the camera. So that's another thing that I would, I would say to Alan and say to the TA, you need to look at up front and before everything happens. They have some things that they're not going to allow in their tournaments. So when you look throughout their website, you'll notice they have equipment restrictions. And in that equipment restrictions is going to make a lot of fans of bass fishing very happy. No live scope, no forward facing sonar, and no 3D 360 imaging transducers, which is the hot topic these days in fishing. Forward facing sonars, either you love it or you hate it. Some some content creators create one video a week talking about forward facing sonar. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think the majority of people don't like it because they don't they think it is a little form of cheating, which is a whole nother video we could get into. But the TEA is going to restrict those things. They're also going to have no practice allowed. They're going to have a 15 day no information and all anglers will fish the first two days. And then on the third day, the top 12 are going to fish leading up to the top 12 and do it. The anglers need to film all stuff on all days, which is really kind of crazy. But hopefully it can work out. I think that the TAA is trying to do things like we used to have back in the day. Can they succeed at it? Possibly. Getting 200 anglers is going to be kind of tough, especially for the first term. And they want to get the first one out of the out and then try to make a tournament trail. Now they will I will say the first the first place they could possibly go is I gotta look for it. Where the heck is it? Oh, Lake Lanier, Chickamauga, or Hartwell. And I think that's three places that anglers know and you don't need a lot of practice at. You know, you get someone like John Murray who's on Chickamauga and he dumped down $5,000 to win 300K. That's pretty impressive. My questions again, behind the scenes, I think there probably needs to be a few more people. I know it's it would be great to have all the money go to directly to the anglers because they do deserve it. But there needs to be people behind the scenes helping produce a quality product because you don't want to have a, a humongous, really expensive Wednesday night tournament, and this is a Wednesday night tournament, and have a bunch of people complain about what's the, the behind the scenes stuff. I think I would say directly to Alan. I think if, if you think the you can get all the anglers to to film every day, all day, all their stuff, I think you're gonna be very surprised that it doesn't work out as well as you want it to work out. There's always something going on with GoPros or whatever it is, unless you have someone sit in the boat and actually film that person all day. Even then, I think you're gonna have questions about what's going on. I think I would ask right up front, are you gonna have polygraphs for the winners? Are you going to review all the footage of all the top anglers that get paid to make sure there wasn't anything sketchy? Who's going to check the boats to make sure that the, the anglers boats to make sure that there isn't stuff in the live well? I mean, just look at what happened in the walleye tournament. The worst thing that can happen is that you go to, a, you have this tournament and someone wins and then you find out that there was some stuff that was sketchy because then you completely ruin, ruin that tournament or that tournament trail. So there's a lot of things that I have questions about, but hopefully at some point Alan will come out and make another video or they'll do well and, and who knows, hopefully they can get the 200 people. I mean, we looked at NPFL years ago, and while they are a completely different organization, they had a hard time filling up 75 this past year. So can you get 200? I think if you want to get 200, the first thing you need to do is definitely say, we're going to go here. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I think you, you need to realize, or the anglers that are in this these tournaments, if it does go on, that they need to realize that there's probably 80 grand that needs to come out for insurance and that kind of stuff. I think just having someone edit the video down just to put up short clips or put up stuff on YouTube, I think you got to pay someone a pretty significant amount because if you have 200 boats, that person needs to go through 200 boats of all their footages over two straight days. And that's a lot of watching video, a lot of watching stuff to see what's going on. I think you need to make the, the 
the whole thing as detail oriented as possible. What the pros are, what the cons are. Explain to everybody what's going to happen. What happens if you don't have 200 people? And then move forward. But as it starts off right now, the TAA is something that is slowly gaining some traction here. Can they do it? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't even know if there's enough room in this industry right now to have something like this. While I think that the what's happening with Major League Fishing is a complete disservice to a bunch of anglers that have been on there for a long time, I'm not sure that with MPFL taking a little cut out of the bass fishing tournament organization and the, the tournament trail doesn't hurt something like TAA, or I don't know if TAA hurts NPFL. I think this looks like another really expensive option for the everyday angler or the weekend warrior to try to go fish and win some possible money. But if you're putting weekend warrior up against a pro, I'm not sure if the pro doesn't beat you 99 out of 100 times. You wouldn't put John Cox to go fish my pond across the street against me. He's going to cream me. He's going to whip my ass. I'm going to be a redhead stepchild. Honestly, he's going to beat me like a dog. And that's just how it is. You just have to be honest about it and be upfront. I'm not sure if this tournament, if the TEA doesn't seem like if they get five or six really big name anglers to join their tournament organization and they go to Chickamauga, that those professionals just don't cream all of the weekend warriors. And while it'll be fun to go against the best of the best, putting up $5,000, not having any sponsors and not any media obligations to help promote your Yourself or help promote your sponsors if tournament anglers aren't going won't be willing to join I think you'll see a lot more weekend warrior anglers than the big professionals but I could easily be wrong it wouldn't be the first time and it won't be the last but I don't know you tell me comment below and tell me if you had five thousand dollars would you join the TAA that's what I want to know tell me what you think also in the comments below thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button make sure you take a kid fishing get your fish on I'll talk to you very soon thank you Happy holidays and cheers.